Hey everybody! Sorry I've been so absent. Uh, I am extremely busy this semester, but I'm here to help you a little bit with maybe understanding structures. So, here I have a data definition for a very generic structure and how to define a very generic structure. So as you can see, the data definition starts off with a structure name is make struct name and then the kind of data it takes, like strings, numbers, maybe other data types. And then when you actually define it, you have to do define dash struct, the name, and then in parens you have all your variable names. So if you were making something like a student, it would have a name, GPA, etc., etc. So that's just the basic syntax and how we'd like to define our structures. So here I have just an example of a structure. Uh, it's called a student, and a student takes a string, a number, and another string. Now these, the names of these, the string, the number, and the string is name, GPA, and major. So I've also defined a variable called student1 that's a make student named max with a GPA of 3.75 and a major of computer science. So for example, in the interactions window, if we were to type student1, we'd get back make student max 3.75 computer science. If we wanted to make another student, we would say make student, then a name, then example GPA, I don't know, like three, and an example major. And if we were to hit enter, we just get the make student back. So when we define a structure, it comes with a certain amount of built-in functions that we can use with it. It comes with the constructor, so the make student would be the example of the constructor or the make struct name, and it takes whatever data we have earlier defined earlier that it takes. So if it takes a string, a number, and a string like our student does, then the make dash student will take a string, a number, and a string. The struct also has certain accessor functions. So if we wanted to access the student name, the student GPA, and the student major, we would have to say student-name, student-gpa, and student-major. And then finally, we have a predicate. And this is just the structure name with a question mark that takes anything and returns whether or not it's a make structure name. So here I've provided all the signatures for the built-in functions that this, this student structure makes. So we have the make student, which of course is a constructor, makes this, takes a string, a number, and a string, and outputs a student, which is a make student, as we've said many times before. Um, Student-name takes a make student, or a student, and outputs a string. Same with GPA, takes a student, outputs a number, and the student-major takes a student and outputs a string. And student question mark takes anything and outputs a boolean whether or not this is a make student or a student. And I also have a template for processing a student. Other structure templates will look very similar. We just have process dash structure name and then it takes a structure and it accesses all the parts of the structure using the accessor functions. So if we wanted to get the student's name that we've defined earlier as student1, we would say student-name and put in student1 and get back max. Similarly, if we wanted to get its GPA, we just type in the same thing, etc., etc. As many things as we want to get out. And if we wanted to ask if it was a student, all pretty easy, but what if we asked if one was a student? Oh, not a student. So when we define structures, they're pretty set in stone, it's not, and it's not very easy to change certain aspects of the structure. But fortunately, we have accessor functions, so it's easy to rebuild the structure from scratch and change one aspect of it. So say we wanted to make a function called change GPA that took a number and a student and outputted a new student that changes the student's current GPA to the new GPA. So if we copy the body of the template, it'll make it a lot easier. And just copy and paste it. Now we want to make a new student, so make student would be a helpful function to have. We're not changing the student name, so that's fine. We'll just leave it as the same student. 
name, we are changing the student GPA. So this is where it gets interesting. So we put in the new GPA here. And we don't want to change the major because we're only focusing on the GPA. So we just change that, delete some dots, and there we go. As you can see, the test passed. We gave a change GPA of 4.0 GPA and student 1, and we changed it to 4.0. However, this doesn't actually change student 1's original definition. It stays the same. Change GPA just outputs a new student whose name and major coincidentally are the same as student 1's, but GPA is different. It's a completely new structure. It has nothing to do with the original previously defined student want. Alright, I hope this helped in any way. Hopefully I will make a video on recursion soon. We will see where my schedule is in the future. Hope this helped at all. Until next time.